At this point, what I'd like to do is uh, have a look at the 2D case. So we, we had, when we did our accounting for the two-dimensional theory, we noticed that there were three missing equations. And we've developed the six missing equations for the full 3D theory. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what it means to talk about a two-dimensional problem. And there are two special cases in, the, in 2D. One is known as plane stress and plane strain. And Plane stress is a, a special assumption that we make when we're dealing with mechanical problems of thin bodies. And I'll usually take the z direction as the thin direction. And so if you have a thin body and you're applying loads only in the plane of the body, as shown over here, then we have what is known as the plane stress case. And likewise, if we're dealing with a, a thin body and maybe we're bending it, as shown over here, we can also usually get away with what is known as the plane stress assumption. And the plane stress assumption simply says that all the stresses are in the plane, and those that are associated with the out-of-plane direction, namely sigma zz, sigma zx, and sigma zy, are all equal to zero. Um, now, if you do that and you plug into the 3D equations that we had for the full three-dimensional case of Hooke's law, you find that lots of terms go away, and you find that you're looking at slightly simplified expressions for the two normal strains, so we don't have any sigma zz terms. And there is one shear equation that we have to worry about, and that is gamma xy, so the shear strain in the xy plane. And so those are the three equations, or the three missing constitutive equations that we need for the 2D case. Now, you can get some 3D information out of this, because if you assume that sigma zz is equal to zero, then you can actually back compute as an extra equation what the normal strain in the z direction is. And that's just minus nu, the sum of the two normal stresses in the plane divided by the Young's modulus. And you also get the auxiliary conditions that the shear strains, gamma z theta and gamma y z are equal to zero. So that's a, that's a special case, a two-dimensional special case to, that you can use. So if you have a thin body, you can use these three equations to uh, solve for the constitutive law behavior of the system. The sort of flip assumption that goes with this is something known as the plane strain case. And in, in the plane strain case, what you have is a thick body in the z direction. And so you have inhibited motion in the z direction. So a classic example would be a dam that's supporting, let's say, some kind of water load or something like that. And in this case, what we assume is that there is no motion in the z direction, so w equals zero. And we also assume that nothing changes in the z direction, so the derivative with respect to z of any quantity is equal to zero. If you plug that into the kinematic relationships, the strain displacement relationships, what you find is, is that the strains associated with the z direction are all zero. So the normal strains and the shear strains associated with z are equal to zero. And one can plug these assumptions back into the three-dimensional constitutive equations, and one can rearrange them to find out what the two normal strain equations are and what the shear equation is. And so they look slightly different from those of plane stress, but they're essentially the same thing. They linearly relate the strains in the plane, in the yz plane, to the stresses in the yz plane. As an auxiliary relationship, after you solve the problem, you could back compute what the stresses are in the z direction. They come out to be the Poisson ratio times the sum of the two in-plane normal stresses. Um, but that's simply a, a, an extra bit of information that you can extract from a calculation uh, of this type. So these are the two two-dimensional special cases, plane strain and plane stress. Now, there's one last special case I want to discuss, which is the one-dimensional special case. And this is when you sort of have uniaxial uh, stresses in the system. So, and this applies when you have thin slender members with axial or bending loads. So the dimensions of the object in the x direction are large, but the dimensions of the object in the transverse direction, say the y and the z, are, are small. In this case, we go ahead and assume that sigma xx is the only non-zero stress in the system. And what that leads to is simply one relevant constitutive equation, namely that epsilon xx is equal to sigma xx divided by the Young's modulus. If you want, there are auxiliary quantities that you can calculate after you've solved the one-dimensional problem. Namely, you can compute what the transverse strains are. 
uh, which depend on the Poisson ratio. And then you also find that all of the uh, shear stress strains rather are all zero. So no matter what subscripts you use here, you always get zero. So the, this is the, the third special case that you can derive from the full 3D equations.